100 shows a year. Yeah, really. The Sweet Mix Kids Roadshow has been non-stop. Well, the past few weeks we've been to Los Angeles, Sydney, Melbourne, New York, Lisbon, Rome, Paris, London, Singapore. And they've really made it, performing at some of the world's biggest parties and festivals, from Coachella, Rhythm and Vines, and even the Melbourne Cup. We're a DJ act, first and foremost. So we DJ, we play a range of different types of music. So we can play a reggae festival one day, and then a, you know, a big doof doof dance party in the middle of the bush the next. We can uh, write a love ballad one day and release that, and then the next uh, a hip hop song. So it's fun. How did Sweet Mix Kids begin? I covered some shows for Sander when he went overseas, and then when he came back, I said, thanks for the gigs, let's get a coffee. And we got a coffee, and we thought the same way about a lot of things, so we started working together. And they've played support at private parties for some of the world's top artists, like Ed Sheeran, Coldplay, and Adele. She's fun, she's lovely. She knows how to sing. She loves her rap music and her pop music and she loves to have a dance. We played her end of world tour party, which was quite cool, but she has a very tight knit small group. So it, the majority of the time DJing for her was just us and her. Just her standing in front of us dancing, which was awkward for us, but she was having a great time. She was having a ball. It's really lovely to understand and know that she's worked her ass off and toured the world um, on one of the biggest tours of all time and to know that she can confide in us and have a good night, nice relax, yeah. bit of a cunny cunny and a few waters, it's awesome. What's it like working together? It's good, it's fun. It's, it's, it's nice to share the load. Chris accepts uh, probably about 78% uh, of all of my personalities, which works you know, quite, quite well for both of us. And, and for a guy that, you know, loves spreadsheets and loves to be respectful and do things properly, and I, I admire that too. There's the music, but they're also making a big fashion statement. You want to stand out on stage, right? If you're up on stage and it's all black and there's lots of stuff going on, there's crazy colours and lights, you need to stand out. So we've always worn bright, crazy stuff. Can you describe to me what you're wearing now, where it's from? And this was a thrift shop find in Wellington on Cuba Street. Trelise Cooper? Yes. The pants. And I'm close friends with the faculty. Just got some new threads right from Trelise. Yeah, she dresses us for a lot of her fashion shows and we keep her Trelise Cooper's uh, clothing and we don't give them back. So we steal Trelise Cooper's clothing <laughs> and we wear them for our shows and Does interviews she and parties. She, she knows, she loves it. She's yeah. A, She's a great fan of our, uh, us and we're a great fan of her, so it's a she's great amazing. It's a great collab. Yeah, she's cool. What's it like wearing women's clothes? Well, no one knows that they're women's clothes. Yeah. Uh, we have such uh, slender, beautiful physiques that it's, <laughs> yes. it's quite, but yeah, it's cool. I mean, some of the stuff doesn't quite fit right, but we just get large women's stuff and we just, we wear a lot of it because that's the most flamboyant, brightest clothing and it works. A little trick to find cool stuff is to look outside the men's section because clothes are just clothes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Woman stuff, you got great big flamboyant jackets and, and, and like uh, ponchos and drapey stuff. Mm. And you know, it's quite cool to be able to uh, wear all of that kind of stuff and get away with it. Today, it's shooting promos for the latest album featuring a dozen other artists, including Māori musician Ray. Yeah, we're stoked to be a part of this album with the boys. So um, yeah, it's cool to do a little photo shoot, make us look flash. It's always nice to, you know, get uh, dressed up and feel a, feel a little bit of pizzazz. I, I love that about them as well, and they're not afraid to be different. You know, that's my pop up with my music and my visuals as well. It's like, yeah, don't be afraid to be bold. Don't be boring. Sweet Mix Kids and Ray have performed around the world together. They created the Waiata Stargazing Arorangi Te Tiro, 
That's the first Te Reo Māori Waiata vid ever filmed on Stewart Island. Te Reo Māori has always been important to Chris and Sandin. I'm uh, born in Nelson, Whakatū, uh, but uh, my tribe, my iwi is Te Aroa, and uh, old Mr Cantabrian here, or his uh, Ngāti Pākehā is what we like to call it. Chris is from uh, Christchurch. From Ōtotahi. Growing up in the, you know, in the 80s and the 90s in the South Island as well, we, we, not many people spoke Te Reo and it was quite hard to embrace the, your culture and, and your heritage growing up when, you know, it, it just wasn't commonly spoken down there. And I spent a lot of time at high school in Dunedin as well and studying down there and no one spoke Māori. I think there was like 37 Māori in the whole city. Did you feel that growing up, that you were disconnected? Hugely, yeah, of course. Um, I, 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 yeah, it was quite common to be disconnected. Have you been able to learn more about your whakapapa? Uh, yeah, a little bit. What's been really important to me is to see um, Aotearoa in general embrace uh, uh, Māori culture, because it's our culture. You hold your head up so much higher, you're so much prouder to be, to be Māori, and it's been amazing uh, making uh, uh, Māori music with Chris and watching him embrace it as well and watching him get on the mic at gigs and, and, and say just a little bit of te reo. Sweet Mix kids have been hustlers since way back, managing themselves for the last seven years. We were with one of the world's major labels for three or four years and they didn't do much. It was a kind of a, a little bit of a waste of time. We were putting out amazing music amazing content, you know, world-class videos, and they didn't do anything with it because they prioritise their biggest artists, the, the world's biggest artists first. So they're the first people that they push to radio, that they push to the media, and you've got, you know, a couple of uh, kids that are based in, from the South Island, based in Auckland, we're, we're the last cab off the ranks, so it's nice being, you know, self-managed and independent at the moment. Yeah, labels have limited resources, and they need to concentrate those resources in a way that's going to be profitable profitable for the business. So if you're not working for yourself first, you, you'll get left behind. They're also taking a whole new approach to releasing music, starting with their latest album, Stargazing. We haven't put the album yet on Spotify on streaming. We've made people buy the album on a record or on a compact disc, or as the kids call it these days, a CD and we, we got in the charts which for the first time, which was quite cool. We have our own range of uh, natural wine. One's a Pet Nat Savion Blanc, which I don't know what that is. That is a natural sparkling wine. Like a New Zealand's kind of natural champagne. And a Pinot Noir, stargazing Pinot Noir. And then you can uh, scan the QR code and that's how you stream our album. If you're over 18, of course. Yeah. If you're under 18, buy a record or a CD. Yeah.